Once upon a time, in a village in ancient India, there was a little goat and a priest. The priest wanted to sacrifice the goat to the gods. He raised his arm to cut the goat's throat, when suddenly the goat began to laugh. The priest stopped, amazed, and asked the goat, Why do you laugh? Don't you know I'm about to cut your throat? Oh, yes, said the goat. After 499 times dying and being reborn as a goat, I will be reborn as a human being. Then the little goat began to cry. The high priest said, Why now are you crying? And the goat replied, For you, poor priest, 500 lives ago, I too was a high priest and sacrificed goats to the gods. The priest dropped to his knees, saying, Forgive me, I beg you. From now on, I will be the guardian and protector of every goat in the land. <laughs> now then, what does this ancient tale teach us? That no living creature must ever be sacrificed. What happened to, uh, to the goat? Ah, yes, the goat. Mm. The goat had many, many lives as a human being. Until one day, he turned into someone very strange indeed. Champa, <laughs> show us something of your previous life. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> A telegram for Lama Norbu. Is it about Lama Toje? Yes. Have they found him? Perhaps. We shall all pray for the success of your mission. And uh, remember to take your medicine.
This is Lama Dorje's board. You will need it for your search. a long flight. Yes, a little tired. Tell me again about your dreams. My dreams began about a month after Lama Doji passed away. They were so intense. And they always led me to the same place. The empty site? Yes. Lama Doji was walking in front of me on a hill. He was pointing to this empty spot. But there was nothing there. And then I found the site quite by chance a few months after, just as it was in the dreams. When I saw Dad started to build a house. I discovered that it belonged to the family of an engineer with a small boy called Jesse an only child. He was born a year after Lama Doji passed away. Lama Doji was wearing jeans? Oh, yes. It was quite startling, because in life he always wore robes. Of course, I felt very shy about approaching them. But then I was lucky. Three weeks ago... A beautiful day. Yes, it is. I'm a Buddhist monk from... Tibet. My name is Kempo Penza. Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> now I teach here in Seattle. Oh, really? I'm a teacher, too. I teach math. Oh, like me. <laughs> also, I teach astrology, mostly astrology. How unusual. We Tibetans have a very advanced system of astrology. Excuse me. May I ask uh, what day, on what day your son was born? On March 1st. Wonderful! And at what hour? In the morning, very early, 6.30. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. 6.30, very special, very special. <laughs> well, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. May I give you the scarf, please? Thank you. Jesse! Mrs. Conrad, you remember me? Uh, we met at Yes, a... of course, at Jesse's school, the uh, Tibetan astrologer. Kenso... Uh, <laughs> Kempo Tenzing. K Kempo Tenzing, yes. <laughs> I got your uh, 
your invitation that you sent me to the Dharma Center, and uh, I've been meaning to go. I just haven't had the time, but uh, but I will. It's looking forward to it. My friend Lama Nobu has just arrived from Bhutan and has never been in America before. He's a very important Lama. He's come on a very special mission. Oh, really? Well, would you like to come inside? Yes. Yes, that would be very kind. It would be very interesting for him. And this is Mrs. Conrad. This is Lama Nobu. Please come inside. Bit of a mess. My husband built this house. He's an engineer. As you can see, we're still living out of boxes, but at least the kitchen's done. We only just moved in a few weeks ago. Very empty. Very beautiful. My husband loves emptiness. If he could have his way, he would keep it like this all the time. Mrs. Conrad? Is it okay if I go now? Oh, yes, it's fine, Marie. It's fine. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Would you like to come into the living room? Oh, that would be very kind. Thank you. Thomas. Be very exciting, very exciting for me. Really? Yes. Can I get you some <laughs> something to drink? Oh no, thank you, thank you. All right, please sit down. Are you sure, Mrs. Conrad? It's okay, Maria. Really, it's fine. Okay. Please make yourselves comfortable. Lama Nobu is also my teacher in a monastery in Bhutan. Oh, I, I see. And he's come on a very important mission for all of us. He will stay at the Dharma Center. We've started here in Seattle. Of course, of course. Oh. It's my husband. Excuse me. Hey, Annie. What's the matter? You look done in. I am. Um... Look, I have a little distraction for you. What's going on, honey? You'll see. Who are these people? Tibetan monks. They just appeared. The round one's a teacher of astrology. And the square one? Teacher's teacher. Where's Jesse? He's finishing his homework. Shall we? This is... Um, Lama Nobu, Kempo Tenzin. This is my husband, Dean. Hi. Uh, they were just admiring the emptiness of the room, sweetheart. Uh-huh. No room will be empty if your mind is full. You learn that in the prison cell. <laughs> <laughs> we are Buddhists from Tibet. For many years, we have been living in exile the guests of our brothers in Bhutan, Nepal, and India. Since the occupation in 1959. In Tibetan Buddhism, we believe that everybody is reborn again and again. But there are a few very special beings who come back as spiritual guides particular people whom we can identify. That is why we are here. So you're here in Seattle to find someone? Yes, my old teacher, Lama Dorje, the man who once found me. We are looking for his reincarnation. Jesse, is that you? Come on, come out. Come say hello. Come on. Come here. 
This is Jesse. This is Lama Norbu. And do you remember Kempo Tenzin from school? Why don't you wear shoes? It's an old Tibetan habit. Do you like my mask? In our country, we love masks. I made it. It's a red rat. Oh. <laughs> Honey, I need a scotch. Mm. So do I. You see, my teacher, Lama Dorji, who was even a teacher of the Dalai Lama, towards the end of his life, he felt he was needed in the West to teach the Dharma, the path of Buddha. So he came to America, to Seattle, where he passed away nine years ago. We have been searching for his reincarnation in many places, but now we think he might have been reborn right here as your son. Is Jesse? Yes. Lama Dorji had a great sense of humor. <laughs> this is Champa. And this is Funzo. Champa, so you have woken up. Please excuse us. It was a great honor to visit you, but now we must leave. You should see the monorail. I'll show you the monorail. Uh, Champa. This book is for you. So, you will be my guide, Jesse. Yeah. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. The story of Prince Siddhartha. Okay, now your toes. Ah! I love your book. Mom, where did those men come from? Well, they're Tibetans, honey. They come from Bhutan, which is a country in the Himalayas. What are the Himalayas? The Himalayas are the highest mountains in the world. Buddha was born 2,500 years ago in a small kingdom in ancient India. As was the custom in those days, his mother, Queen Maya, was returning to her parents' home for the birth of her child. It was a long journey for the queen to make, so on the way, the royal caravan stopped for a rest by the edge of a great forest. entered the trees, she fell into a kind of trance and remembered a strange dream she had had the day she conceived her child. In the dream, a baby elephant had appeared at her side and blessed her with its trunk.
Queen Maya was deep inside the wood when suddenly her birth pains began. And then, it is said, a tree, understanding this great moment, bent slowly down to protect her, offering its branches for her support. was born with almost no pain, with shining golden skin. He was fully conscious, his eyes wide open, and he was strong enough to stand on his own legs. I have been born to reach enlightenment and free all creatures from suffering. And it is said, Lotus blossoms grew in his footsteps. Hey, where's our reincarnation? Where's Lama Dorje? reading his book. Wow. Like the three kings from the east, huh? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, at least they didn't try to tell us that Jesse was the result of an immaculate conception. <laughs> I don't know. I like the idea. Reincarnation. I wouldn't mind coming back. Visiting the places I like again and the people I love. Suppose you come back as an ant. So what's wrong with an ant? Lots of group activity and picnics and... You can get squished. People get squished too. Yeah, that's a fact. I can't believe you'd be this upset over four harmless little Tibetan monks. What's bothering you, Dean? It's Evan. He's bankrupt. What? Evan's bankrupt? He's been hiding it from everybody, even me. But how? How can that happen? I mean, you're his best friend. Everything that you've ever done, you've done together. You know the downtown center? He can't rent a square foot of it. That's what he's telling me. He's desperate. So what's gonna happen then? I don't know. If Evan goes under, we might lose the house. So we'll be poor again. We can still be happy. Mom, come read to me. Coming, Jesse. King Suddhodana, the baby's father, named the child Siddhartha, which means he who brings good. <laughs> And then he gave a great reception to present his son to the people.
suddenly, in the midst of the ceremony, and to everyone's surprise, an unexpected guest arrived. He was the revered hermit and astrologer, Asita, whom nobody had seen for years. As Asita looked at her son, Queen Maya saw tears come to his eyes. Do not be alarmed, O Queen. Mine are only the tears of an old man who knows that he will not live long enough to learn from the teachings of your son. Will he be a great king? He'll be the master of the world or its redeemer. When he grows older, Sita, he can become a teacher like you if he wants. But first of all, you must follow me and be a king. It may be as you wish, but the gods often betray the wishes of mortal men. <coughs> you will be a king. <coughs> as if she knew that she too would not live to see her son's destiny fulfilled. A week later, she was stricken with a terrible illness. Oh, Prajapati. My sister, please care for him. As if he were your son. Maya. here. You're looking for your teacher, aren't you? Yes. And red rats have very long ears. What was your teacher's name? Lama Dorji, which means thunderbolt in Tibetan. Lama Thunderbolt? I think you should go to the police if you want to find him. No, the police can't help us. You see, Lama Dorji is dead. But how can you find him if he's dead? It's very difficult to explain, but we believe he's been reborn. Like a ghost, you mean? No, as a child. Could I be Lama Dorji? You could be, yes. I think I am. I am Lama Thunderbolt. We'll have to see about that. Then why did you come to our house? You ask a lot of questions, eh? Yes, Maria, yes! <laughs> I can show you Buddha. Oh, 
My father built that building. See? The one with the green dome. He made it for his friend Nevin, but it's always empty. Was Buddha a god? No, he was a real person. Like Jesus? Yes, quite a bit like Jesus, though he was born long before. What happened to Buddha when he grew up? Oh, he wasn't called Buddha yet. He was still young Prince Siddhartha. <sighs> and he married the beautiful princess Yashoda. He became a great horseman, a great archer, and he often played with his friends the ancient game called Kabaddi. You mean all he was doing was having a great time? Yes. One The king had given Siddhartha three palaces, one for winter, one for the rainy season, and one for summer. In this way, he hoped to shield his son from all knowledge of pain or worry. But then, one day, Siddhartha heard a mysterious song of haunting beauty. First, he couldn't understand where it was coming from. The song was in a language he had never heard before. What was it saying? What did it mean? What is this song? It is from a faraway land, my lord. It evokes the beauties of the country she knew as a child. The mountains and the lakes that she can never forget. How strange. Do such places exist? Places as beautiful as here? I have heard that only suffering lies beyond these walls. What do you mean? Suffering. Your father loves you very much. He has given us everything we could want. There is no need to go anywhere else when you have such beauty around you. It is true. We have everything and everything is perfect. So, what is this? feeling I have. 
If the world is so beautiful, why have I never seen it? I've not even seen my own city. I must see the world, Yashodara, with my own eyes. talking about Jesse I'm not gonna die everybody dies hey how's your llama oh he's like your detective dad he's looking for his dead teacher Jesse. and llama dorji means llama thunderbolt and Bhutan is the land of the thunder dragon Jesse, why are you looking at me like that like what like you never saw me before. Oh, that's my Tibetan look. <laughs> what do you mean, your Tibetan look? I mean, this is all great, but how far do we want to go with it? You know your son, don't you? You know what kind of imagination he's got? He's going to get confused. Go on. Pretty soon he's going to start to think that he is this Lama Dorje. At least I don't believe in reincarnation. I mean, not like this anyway. We're coming back as a specific person with a name and an address and a telephone number. And neither do you. Or do you? No. So? So. So, we don't know much about anything. We know absolutely nothing about the most important things of all. We don't know why we're born or even if there is a why. And that's interesting. I gotta call Levin. I'm worried, honey. That's all I'm saying. India? Nepal, Bhutan, China, Tibet. Well, this must be the Dharma Center. It looks like a church. It's beautiful, but I'm afraid I have to go. Jesse, come say goodbye. Okay. So your dad's gonna come by and pick you up at four, all right? Okay. Okay, sweetie. Excuse me, Lama. I was worried. One day, Champa, but not yet. 
Hey, that's Lama Thunderbolt. Yes. Is this his ball? Look. It's dusty. What's this? It is a trumpet made from a human bone. Honest? A human bone? Now, where did we get to? Oh, said Arto wanted to see the world. Ah, yes, he wanted to see the world. Secretly, however, his father prepared everything in advance so that nothing Siddhartha might see in the city would upset or disturb him. Everyone should be young and healthy. The young prince saw something he had never seen before. Chana! Chana! Who are those men? Tell me, who are those men? They are men like the rest of us, my lord, who once sucked milk from their mother's breast. But why do they look like that? They are old, my lord. What do you mean, old? Old age destroys memory, beauty, and strength. In the end, he happens to us all, my lord. To everyone? To you and to me? It is better not to concern yourself with these things, my lord. Uh, but where are they taking them? Chana! No, my lord. Don't go there, please. You mustn't. No, my lord. My lord! My Lord Siddhartha! Yeah, I'm big, I got it.
is the matter with those people? Why is she crying like that? She is in pain, my lord. She is very sick. Sick? What is that? No one reaches the moment of death without falling sick at least once. Even kings? And death. What moment is that? Show me death. This is death, my lord. Ashes are given to the river, my lord. Death is the moment of separation which comes to every person in every family. When a body grows cold and stiff like wood, it has to be burnt like wood. on this day, from this fire, with these people, that Siddhartha learned about suffering and discovered compassion. They were him, and he was them. Am I interrupting? Of course not. Please, come in. Look, it's human bone. Wow, spooky, huh? Jesse, I need to talk to Lama Norbu alone for a minute. Okay, Dad. Okay. Come, I'll show you around the center. 
I was just telling Jesse the story of Siddhartha. That's a beautiful story, a beautiful myth. It is one way of telling the truth, and children seem to love it. Lama Norbu, I have great respect for your culture and your religion. And I know about the invasion of Tibet and the tragedies that happened. But I don't believe in reincarnation, and neither does my wife. Why should you? In Tibet, we think of the mind and the body as the contents and the container. Now, the cup is no longer a cup. But what is the tea? Still tea. Exactly. In the cup, on the table, or on the floor, it moves from one container to another, but it's still tea. Like the mind after death, it moves from one body to another, but it is still mind. Even in the towel, it's still tea, the same tea. None for me, thanks. <laughs> Once we're certain about the reincarnation, the child would receive a special education. He could become a very powerful figure in our society, a spiritual leader. Even if he's an American? I mean, what are you you're offering Jesse life in a Buddhist monastery? Is that it? Of course, if he wanted it. Or he could go on with his life here and decide when he's older. But first, to be sure of the reincarnation, we will take Jesse to Bhutan, consult the abbot of the monastery and all the experts. Now you look angry. I am. To take a child away from his family in this country we call kidnapping. <laughs> Oh, thank you. We hope you and your wife would come with him. To Bhutan? Yes. It's a very beautiful country. Well, well. It seems there's another candidate for the reincarnation of Lama Dorje. A little boy from Kathmandu. Are there a lot of us, Lama Norbu? How many are there? I want to meet Come on, them. let's go. Come on. This has gone too far. We're out of here. Jesse. Mama Norbu. Jesse. Say goodbye, Mama. Jesse. Don't forget your book. Jesse Long years. Goodbye, Lama Norbu. Oh, my father. Why have you hidden the truth from me so long? Why have you lied to me about the existence of suffering, sickness, poverty, old age, and death? If I've lied to you, Siddhartha, it has been because I love you. Your love has become a prison. How can I live here as I lived before, when so many are suffering outside? You never wanted to go outside. Father, mm -hmm. I must find an answer to suffering. Even if you betray me, Siddhartha, have you no pity for the wife you leave and for your own son? My child is born? Born this very evening. Think of them, Siddhartha. You too are a father. You too have a duty. You cannot live now. Even my love for Yashodara and my son cannot remove the pain I feel. For I know that they too will have to suffer, grow old, and die like you, like me. Like us all.
Yes. We must all die. And be reborn. And die again. And be reborn and die. And be reborn and die again. No man can ever escape that curse. Then that is my task. I will lift that curse. Lock the gate. Double the guard. If the prince tries to escape, he must be stopped by force. Try to get a flight out tonight. What happened to Evan? Evan had an accident. As soon as he left his father, Siddhartha went to see his wife and his newborn son. His heart was torn, but his mind was made up. They looked so beautiful, but they were asleep, and he was awake. Only the 
great elephants are awake, my lord. The whole world is dreaming, Chana. But for Siddhartha, the dream was ending. His long journey of awakening had begun. Who are they, Chana? Are they robbers? No, my lord. They're ascetics. Ascetics? Why are they so thin and naked? They have given up all the comforts of life, my lord. They have sworn never to leave the forest until they have reached enlightenment. Enlightenment? These are for you. Chana, I am doing this for everyone. I am looking for freedom. Nobly born, have mercy, I am Nati, I am Nati, I am Nati, I have Nati, I have Nati. So the prince gave up his robes to the beggar and set off alone into the wood. And, it is said, a tree noticed his compassion and, as it had done once before, bowed down in his honor.
If five ascetics witnessed these miracles and were filled with wonder, they became Siddhartha's first disciples. So sorry about Mr. Evan, Mr. Conrad. I... Thanks, Maria. I know. Is Jesse all right? Yeah, he's... He read in his room all afternoon. He's asleep now. Thank you for staying here. Do you want me to fix you something to eat? No, thanks. Cab's waiting outside to take you home. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Lisa, I think Jesse should go to Bhutan. What? I think Jesse should go to Bhutan. You're joking, right? No, I've just changed my mind about a lot of things these last two days. But what are you saying, Dean, that you've suddenly started to believe Jesse is this Tibetan lama? I thought you were the one who was open to the idea. This is crazy. What's going on? Nothing's going on. Just think of it as a career opportunity for Jesse. He can get a little robe and sit on the floor and it's do meditation. Funny. It's hang not out with funny, little Dean. Monks and... It's not funny. Jesse can't go to Bhutan. It's just for a couple of weeks. No, he can't go. He's got school. I'm in the middle of the semester. And I can't take him. I thought I could go with him. Just the two of you? Yeah. Well, I stay here. But you've never looked after Jesse before. <laughs> He's never been away from me. There's nothing I can do here now except for wait for lawyers to talk to lawyers to talk to lawyers. Maybe it's the time I need to think about what to do with the rest of my life. Without me. I love you, Lisa. You better. It's just for a couple of weeks. It'll be all right. What if they decide that Jesse is this reincarnation? They never will. 
They already have another candidate. A little boy in Kathmandu. I'm sorry, Dean. I'm sorry. I'm just upset with myself. Being upset. For not encouraging you and for not being able to be with you and Jesse. Because you're taking the adventure away from me. Good morning, Jesse Long years. Were you sleeping, Llama? No, I was meditating. What's meditating? It is being totally quiet and relaxed. Separating yourself from everything around you. Setting your mind free like a bird. And you can then see your thoughts as if they were passing clouds. Look. If we can learn to meditate in the right way, we can all reach enlightenment. For six years, Siddhartha and his followers lived in silence and never left the forest. For drink, they had rain. For food, they had a grain of rice or a broth of mud or the droppings of a passing bird. They were trying to master suffering by making their minds so strong they would forget about their bodies. Then, one day, Siddhartha heard an old musician on a passing boat speaking to his pupil. If you tighten the string too much, it will snap. And if you leave it too slack, it won't play. Suddenly, Siddhartha realized that these simple words held a great truth. And that in all these years, he had been following the wrong path.
The village girl offered Siddhartha her bowl of rice. And for the first time in years, he tasted proper food. But when the ascetics saw their master bathing and eating like an ordinary person, they felt betrayed, as if Siddhartha had given up the great search for enlightenment. Come and eat with me. You have betrayed your vows, Siddhartha. You have given up the search. We can no longer follow you. We can no longer learn from you. To learn is to change. The path to enlightenment is in the middle way. It is the line between all opposite extremes. If I can reach enlightenment, may this board float upstream. Middle way was the great truth Siddhartha had found, the path he would teach to the world. of the stupa is the symbol of earth. The dome is the symbol of water. Above the eyes are the levels of enlightenment or fire. The umbrella above is the symbol of air. Now you should go around and look for yourselves. We can meet in half an hour. There's a place over there called the Stupa View Coffee Shop. Mama, Mama, can I go around and touch those things? The prayer wheels? Of course. But remember, you should always walk around clockwise. OK, Dad? You will be completely safe here. OK, Jesse. I'll see you later. I'll be watching you.
Look, Kempa, here's the candidate. Amongst all these people, the two of them have found each other. Singer. Thanks. My name's Jesse. I'm Raju. Come. Hey, up here, buddy. Champa, can I ask you something? Of course. Is Laman Orbu sick? I see him taking those pills. He's not completely well, but very strong. Dad! Dad, this is my new friend, and he found me when I was lost. Hello? We know, Jesse, we know. We've been waiting for you both. We are very pleased to meet you, Raju. Sangi has told us much about you. It is good that two of the candidates have found each other in this way. Now we must visit a third candidate, whom I've only just heard about. It will be a very long drive. So let us hope it is Lama Dorji's last joke. Lama Dorji always made jokes about impermanence. Lama, what's impermanence? You see these people? All of us? And all the people alive in the world today, a hundred years from now, will all be dead. That is impermanence. Hey. Hey, Jesse. You want to call mom?
Lisa? Lisa? God, I can't hear a thing. Now I, now I can. Have I become a Buddhist? Well, Jesse, I guess I'm learning. Lisa, Lisa, I'm losing the line. I'm, I'm losing the line. Lisa, we love you. I send help, sir. Car broken, sir. Yeah. Very bad karma. I hope your journey was not too tiring, Lama. Thank you. Thank you. Now I want to meet the child. Here's my precious. Geeta, come and meet Lama Norbu. Gita, this is Jesse and Raju. I am the real Lama Dojo, and you are both fakes. Lama Dojo wasn't a woman. He was the abbess of a convent. And how would you know? I'm sorry, you don't go to school, and you're a foreigner. I have a secret garden. Come, come, oh ignorant boys. by a tiger. You're right. There was a terrible famine, and the tiger was looking for food to feed her babies. So, my grandfather offered himself. He must have been pretty stupid to do something like that. <laughs> Only a great being can do something like that. <laughs> Eat me! Oh, poor tiger! This tooth belonged to the tiger that ate my grandfather. Cool. Hey, you can't fool me. I heard the story a thousand times, but you don't know that. Your grandfather must have been pretty tough if the poor tiger lost his tooth. <laughs> As holder of the tiger tooth, I make you both members of the secret society of the King Cobra. My late husband, a man of great faith, made a donation every year to Lama Dorje's monastery. One day, <laughs> Lama Dorje came here unannounced, just appearing at the door like a miracle. He stayed for two days. And just as he was leaving, he placed his hand on my stomach, like this, for a long time. I didn't know what it meant, but immediately after Lama Dolja died, I became pregnant, something which my husband and I had thought was impossible. A month ago, she wrote to me to come right away because a most amazing thing had happened. 
One night, the child... Rita was chanting prayers in Tibetan, saying things which I couldn't understand. She was speaking Tibetan in her sleep? The Heart Sutra, a little miracle. How could she know that? She was speaking Sanskrit. Tayata, kate kate, para kate, para son kate, putie swa. under this tree? Yeah? Anyhow, a tree just like this one. Lama! Lama, is it true? Is this really like Siddhartha's tree? Well, probably something very similar. It was outside a little village called Bodhgaya. Siddhartha sat under a great tree, just like this one. He had found the middle way and restored his body to health. And then five girls appeared. They looked like innocent village girls, but in fact, they were the five daughters of Mara, Lord of Darkness. They were the spirits of pride, greed, fear, ignorance, and desire. And Mara had sent them to tempt Siddhartha away from his search. I'm going closer. Mara had tried to tempt Siddhartha in the cleverest of ways, by disguising the temptations of life in the simplest forms. But Siddhartha was looking beyond form beyond the present. And now, Mara was enraged.
It seemed as if Mara had been defeated, but in fact, he had not yet given up the battle. Now he attacked again. will dare. Will you be my god, architect? Finally I have met you. You will not rebuild your house again. But I am your house. And you live in me. O oh, lord of my own ego. You are pure illusion. You do not exist. The earth is my witness. Siddhartha won the battle against an army of demons just through the force of his love and the great compassion he had found. And he achieved the great calm that precedes detachment from emotions. He had reached beyond himself. He was beyond joy or pain separate from judgment, able to remember that he had been a girl, a dolphin, a tree, a monkey. <laughs> he remembered his first birth and the millions after that. He could see beyond the universe. Siddhartha had seen the ultimate reality of all things. He had understood that every movement in the universe is an effect provoked by a cause. He knew there was no salvation without compassion for every other being. From that moment on, Siddhartha was called the Buddha, the Awakened One. What is it, Jesse? I'm scared, Dad. Hey, man, I'm scared too. What are we gonna tell Mom? She's gonna want to hear the end of the story. Yeah.
Welcome to our home. Go on, join them, if you dare. began making this mandala the day I left the monastery. And now it is almost complete. It's beautiful. Why is it made of sand? To show the impermanence of all within the universe. So when it is completed, it will be destroyed with one gesture, like that. It is very mysterious, Your Holiness. All three children show the same signs. We shall see. Come in, Raju, the friend of little monkeys. Now, I have a question for you. Do you see those red hats? Please choose the one you like best. They are all the same. They are all the same, yet each one is different. Thank you, Raju. Hello. Come in, Gita. Please choose the hat you like best. Thank you, Gita. Welcome, Jesse Long Ears. Now then, do you see those hats? Please choose the one you like best. Jesse, please, please, be very careful. This is Lama Dorje's hat. I think I have very little time left, Your Holiness. Then we must ask the Oracle, Lama Nobu. Though in the end, only you can decide.
Oh, my teacher, I'm so happy to have found you again. I'm so happy to have found you again. you at last. Perhaps one day you will find me. Happy. Three times happy. But how can we all be Lama Dorchi? It is very rare, but it has happened before. Separate manifestations of the body, the speech, and the mind. None of these three exists without the others. All of us are attached, like the world, to the universe. But remember this, most important thing of all is to feel compassion for all beings, to give of oneself, and above all, to pass on knowledge, like the Buddha. Jesse! Jesse! You all right? Oh, yes. Thank you. A little overcome, that's all. Uh, it's been a kind of emotional time for all of us. Uh, I'm afraid. I'm not a very good example of Buddhist detachment. <laughs> children. We are all children. <sighs> the ball is for Jesse. And uh, this is for you. My work is done. Now I can rest. I can even go back to Tibet, to the place I was born. <laughs> you still don't believe in reincarnation, do you? <laughs>
Yesterday he talked about going back to Tibet. He must have meant something different. Someone like Lama Norku can remain like this for 10 days or even more. He can sit like a mountain, serene and unmoral. And he can meditate deep and vast as ocean. his passion for life. What about the people he's leaving behind? He will come back. I don't know if I believe him, but I'd like to.
Raju. Jesse. Gita. They are chanting the Heart Sutra. A beautiful prayer. Keep it with you in your hearts always. Oh, Shariputra. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. No eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. No color, sound, smell, taste, touch, existing thing. Minorbu just said, no eye, no ear, no nose, no Jesse, no Lama, no you, no death, and no fear. No old age and death. No end to old age and death. No suffering, no causal or end to suffering. No path, no wisdom, and no gain. No gain. Thus bodhisattvas live in perfect understanding with no hindrance of mind. No hindrance, therefore no fear. Far beyond deluded thoughts, this is nirvana.
Hey, Jesse. Is it time? Yes, I think it's time. <laughs>